Hi, today we will be installing Starlog v4. Starlog v4 can be used for all Unidata loggers and is used to create schemes or programs so that the data logger can record any parameters or uh, functionality that the logger will be recording such as temperature sensors, weather parameters, etc. Today we'll be showing how to install Starlog v4 so that it can be used to create schemes. Firstly, we can go to the Unidata website, which is www.unidata.com.au. Once we have gone to the website, we can go to Products, Starlog Data Loggers, and then Starlog v4 software. Here we can download the latest Starlog v4. This can be downloaded from the section here. So all we need to do is click on Starlog v4. This is then downloading for us. It is only about 18 meg, so it should not take too long. Starlog has now been downloaded successfully, so we can now click on the file. Now that we have downloaded Starlog v4, we can now run the executable file to install Starlog v4. Double click on the Starlog v4 executable file. Now we can see that a message has popped up for us to run this file. Please click on run. Note that when you run this executable file, that you will need full administration rights for your PC for the Starlog v4 to be installed in the correct manner. Click Next. Accept the agreement and then click Next. Starlog v4 will be installed on the local C drive in the Starlog v4 directory. So this selection is correct. Please click Next. If you have uninstalled version 4 before, if this message may pop up saying that the version 4 folder already exists. If not, or if so, please click yes. Click next to continue. If you would like the Starlog v4 icon to be located on your desktop, please click on create a desktop item and click next. Now you can click the install button to fully install Starlog v4. This may take up to a few minutes to install. Starlog v4 installation has now completed. Please click finish. We can now close our executable file box and we can see that Starlog v4 has now been installed. We can click on the desktop item. You can see that a box now appears with v3 compatibility. As Starlog v3 is no longer used, this information does not need to be filled in. Please click the next button. You would have been supplied with a username and code key if you have purchased Starlog v4. If you are uh, use have purchased the Starflow instrument only, you would have been provided with just a code key. There are two options here, full Starlog v4 or Starflow instrument only. Please click on the correct item which is required. If you would just like to check Starlog v4 is suitable for your application, you can enable a 30 day trial. Please enter your username and code key, which has been provided to you. Once you have entered your correct code key, please click on the next button. Now that you have entered the correct code key, Starlog v4 full version has been unlocked and all features are available. Click OK. 
can now see that you have been registered correctly. Click on the finish button. Starlog V4 will now automatically pop up and now Starlog V4 has been fully installed. Now that Starlog V4 has been fully installed, we can now install our USB to serial converter. This can be plugged into the USB to serial port on your computer. Once it is plugged in, the device will automatically install its drivers and to check this you can go to the control panel on your PC. In control panel we can click on the system button. We that can then go to device manager. This will show us the ports have, that have been installed in our computer. We click on the ports drop down box. We will see a number of ports here. The ports that we are looking for is a prolific USB to serial COM port. If we unplug the port, you will notice that one of these ports will disappear. So we can confirm that the USB to serial COM port 3 is the USB COM port that we'll be using. If we plug it back in, we will see that it reappears. Scroll down, we can now see that USB to serial COM port 3 has reappeared. If we want to choose a different port to use, we can right click on this and go to properties. In here we can click port settings, advanced, and then change the COM port to a number that we would prefer. Note that if it is already in use, then the COM port cannot be changed. As COM port 3 has been allocated, we will use COM port 3. Here we can click OK. OK. If the driver has not been installed correctly, there will be a yellow icon on the prolific USB to serial COM port name. If this does happen, you may need to search for the drivers on the internet to download correctly. Once this is done in Starlog V4, we can now check if our COM port has been added correctly. This can be done by going to File, Options, Communications Map. Once we are in here, we can check if the COM port is here. Here you can see that many ports have been allocated. In this circumstance, I would recommend deleting the ports that are not being used. So in this case, we will delete all the ports. As we know, we are using going to be using COM3. We can now add COM3. So direct RS232. In here we can then select COM3 in our drop down box. As this is the only port that we'll be using the program loggers, it is best to just have the one port specified in the Starlog V4 application. Otherwise it is easy to get confused. Once we've had added our one COM port, we can click OK. When creating a new scheme, we can go to Scheme Editor, New. As an example, we'll choose a Starlogger 54K. And in Settings, we can now see that we only have COM, Direct to COM3. This will allow us to program the logger easily on COM3 and also go to Test Mode on COM3. Now Starlog V4 and the correct USB to serial port have been installed. So we can now program our logger using Starlog V4 and our newly installed USB to serial converter. Thank you.